let me walk you through one of these homework problems to get you started. In this problem, we're looking at the material variances as well as the labor variances. We'll start with the material variance. We're going to go through these just like we did the example in our lectures. So first, we want to find that total material variance. And remember that total material variance is just comparing the standard to the actual. So I'm taking a look at an actual quantity times my actual price, and I'm going to compare that to my standard quantity at my standard price. So these are the four components that we're going to need anyway to figure out some of our other variances. So we'll take a step, um, some time to make sure we understand where these are all coming from. So the actual quantity, when I look at the information, all of the standard information is giving, given to us at the top of the problem, and then it goes into the actual information at the bottom. So make sure you separate those two very different pieces of the problem whenever you get that problem. So first I'm going to start with the actual, which is the bottom half. It tells me my actual quantity, it just gives it to me as Remember, we're talking material, so we're looking at pounds here, and that's 1900 My actual price, they're not giving directly to you, but you can figure that out. So if, I'm going, if I know I spent 5035 and I bought 1900 pounds, that would give me an actual price of the math, $2.65. And I'm going to look at my standard quantity here. My standard quantity, again, you have to do a little bit of math because I take that actual number of units produced and then I'm going to multiply that by how much material it should be using, which is 8. So my actual quantity is actually going to be 1840. And I look at my standard price. That standard price they give to me is $2.50. One thing that you should make sure you look at is that my numbers are comparable. If I look at prices, I have $2.65 versus $2.50. That seems reasonable. My quantities seem reasonable, so I must be on the right track. So if I just did the math here, I would say my actual price 5035, which they really gave me. Compare that to my standard. Got to do a little math here. That's 4600. Therefore, my difference is $435. Is it favorable or unfavorable? Well, I actually paid more than I thought I should, so that would be unfavorable. Now, we're going to break that part down to price variance and quantity variance. Remember when we look at material price variance, I'm going to compare the prices. So I'm going to pull out my actual price minus my standard price. And if I use the information and know these equations, I know I'm going to times that by my actual quantity. Again, this just saves you time. You can go through and compare if you want to. Um, and do the whole chart, but this will save you time in the long run. So I can just look at the top and I know my actual quantity was 1900 my actual price was $2.65, and my standard price was two fifty. I can do that math and know that I come up to two eighty five, dollars and it's unfavorable because I spent more than I thought I would. Now I can compare that to my material quantity variance. My material quantity variance, remember, compares quantity. Actual quantity minus standard quantity. And I can use the information I know to know that that common factor in my quantity variance is standard price. And since I've already pulled out all this information, I can just now plug it all in. My standard price was $2.50. 
my actual quantity 1900, my standard quantity 1840. That, for, that gives me a difference of 150. It's unfavorable because I actually used more than I should have. And I can double check that I did everything right because if I add these two together, it comes to 435 unfavorable, which matches what I started with. Now let's look at the, the total labor variance and we'll walk you through that piece of it. So the total labor variance um, compares again actual to standard. So that's where, we'll, where we will start to make sure that we can kind of tie everything back. It's kind of gives us confidence that we're doing this right. So that total labor variance. That compares my actual to my standard. And when we're talking about labor, it's actual hours times actual rate and standard hours versus standard rate. So let's pull that information out. The part that we have that's just given directly to us, that's a little bit easier. They tell me I used 700 hours. They're also telling me, let's see if we can find anything else, that my standard rate is $12. That's given to us in the problem. The other stuff we might have to work a little bit at, which is fine. In regards to labor, our total price was 8120 and I worked 700 hours. So that will break down and give me the rate that I need, which is $11.60. Those standard hours, again, I'm looking at how many units I've actually made so I can compute how, mu how much time it should have taken me. I made 230 units and it tells me I should take three hours per unit. So the standard hours, if I do that math, should come to 690. Now I can compare and look at, well, what is my actual price versus my standard price? Again, they gave you the actual price. I don't have to do that, but I wanna break that down so I can get those figures. And I'm gonna compare it to the standard price of 690 times 12, which is 8,280. If I do that math, it comes to a $160 difference, which I can look and see that I've paid less, so that would be favorable. Now let's break that down. We'll start with our labor price variance. Labor price variance is gonna compare those rates. Actual rate minus standard rate. And uh, the common factor here was the actual hours. So to save us some time in math, we're gonna do this simple short equation and I've already pulled out all the numbers I need. So now I can just plug them in. 1160 we figured to be the actual rate. Standard rate was 12. And if I do that math, it's gonna come to 280. And that's gonna be favorable because I spent less than I thought I was going to per hour. And finally, let's look at that labor quantity variance. When we're talking quantity, we're looking at hours. So actual hours versus standard hours. And that common factor, what we were in our journal entries is going to be our standard rate. Again, it's helpful because we pulled out all that information to begin with, so now I can just plug it in. My standard rate was 12, my actual hours 700, standard hours were 690, so that gives me a difference of 10 hours, and I multiply that by 12, which is a $120 difference. Now, I've used more hours than I should have, so that would make this unfavorable. 
I can double check, subtract these because they're different, because one's favorable, one's unfavorable. I have a favorable difference, and that ties back to my original total labor variance. So hopefully that gets you started, helps you through one of these problems. But I think the key here is to remember to pull out that information, find those four pieces, actual hours, actual rate, standard hours, standard rate. For each of those problems, find those first, make sure that they're comparable, and then just plug them into the equations that you know.